I don't think anybody thought it would be this bad. Especially me. I was not ready at all. I should have done more more research on this. I just didn't expect it to be like this. I'm starving. There's no food. Oh my gosh. I can't trust anybody. What the heck? Is that what I think it is? A peanut butter and jelly? Mm -mm. And great? Mm. Mm -mm. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Mm. What the heck is that rope for? That could be you. Please, I implore you. Do your research now. Don't become cannibal food for your neighbors. And today, through Yankee Prepper, I'm offering my DVD on how to survive your cannibal neighbors in an SHTF. This DVD will give you all the answers that you've been waiting for on how to survive your cannibal neighbors. I give you step-by-step -step instructions on what to look out for. For example, if your neighbors drop off baked goods, jellies, homemade goods, maybe giving you extra items from the garden, that's a sure sign that they're trying to fatten you up. These aren't people just being neighborly. They're trying to get you fatter so they can roast you. This DVD's got tons of information on what to look out for, including that, and how to circumvent these situations to get around them, and especially how to survive them in an SHTF. I'm offering this DVD today for $19.95, and if you order right now, I'll throw in the top 10 most popular guns of teenagers and G.I. Joe wannabes on YouTube. Yankee Prepper Enterprises have spent thousands of hours interviewing teenagers and G.I. Joe wannabes to find their favorite guns for an SHTF or WROL. Order now, and I'll throw in this DVD. And we're not done yet. I'll also throw in how to murder someone with the help of your nerdy friends. Turns out nerds are incredibly important during an SHTF or WROL. And it also turns out that you can still manipulate them much like you did in high school. Order right now, $19.95. I'll give you all three DVDs, step by step, on how to manipulate your nerdy friends to murder someone. Call now. Get these gifts. Get these DVDs. And help you survive your cannibal neighbor. Today on the Yankee Prepper Workshop, I'm going to show you how to make one of these. It's a do-it-yourself portable wood gas stove that you would use for hiking or camping or canoeing. Uh, that's what I use it for, but it also could have some prepper implications as a uh, portable heater, emergency heater, uh, and cook stove. Now that the stove that I make here is definitely modeled directly after the Bush Buddy. And the Bush Buddy is a great stove. In fact, I recommend that you pause this or shut this down and go research the Bush Buddy first. Uh, the Bush Buddy is a well-made stove. The problem with it is that it's $120 to $140. And as a do-it-yourselfer kind of guy or a prepper, I could never, even if I had just the money to throw away, I could never pay $120 for a can. I have to make it myself. Now there's nothing new in wood gas stove technology. It's been, it's been done for a long time and everything that's been done has been done already and it's not that complicated of a subject anyway. I just think there's a lot of hack jobs out there that don't get the whole concept of uh, airflow and, and what you need and where you need it. This stove works very well. It works great in the field and uh, it'll boil water quick. Like I said, very comparable to the Bush Buddy itself. Okay, let's go over what you're going to need for this job. Part wise, you're going to need a quart can. I picked this up for $1.40. $1.40. <clears throat> I picked this up at Hershire Paints for $1.49. It's an empty quart can. This is a progressive soup can. Okay, I already took the label off. And I believe, let me see here. That's 19 ounces. It comes with that pull tab. 
and then I've got a tuna can, but it's not the regular tuna can, it's the seven ounce tuna can. I buy these at uh, Costco. I'm sure they have them at other grocery stores, but remember that is the seven ounce can. So th those are the three raw material parts you're gonna need. Tool-wise, to do this right, I've got a Dremel with a couple grinder bits and a cutoff wheel. I've got a uh, Sharpie, of course, tin snips. I got my drill bit, and it's a multi-size drill bit and uh, high-speed steel drill bit. That's the key. And then I've got an angle grinder with a uh, grinding wheel on it. And give or take a few other odds and bits, that's basically what you're going to need. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is work on the big can. And I'm going to drill, not on this side, this side. Not on this side, this side. This is the top, this is the bottom. I'm going to drill eight three-quarter inch holes around the side here. Now, a lot of you will be motivated some for some reason to measure this out, and I understand that it's a lack of eyeballing skill. I have a tremendous amount of experience eyeballing. I have a ton of eyeballing skill, so I'm just going to eyeball this. In fact, I am so good at eyeballing that NASA often asks me to come out and eyeball some of their uh, rovers and rockets just to make sure everything's in place. Okay, I've marked those out symmetrically around the can and I'm going to drill some pilot holes before I uh, drill the big ones. Okay, there's my pilot holes. Now I'm going to put the big drill bit on and finish the job. Done. See how nice that looks? The key is go slow. Go slow or it's going to look like some hack job. Now I'll go back and uh, probably clean up those edges a little bit with the Dremel as well. I like uh, my projects to have a nice finished look. Even spraying the drill bit itself, a little bit of oil is recommended. You just go slow, make it smooth. Okay, next thing we're going to do is put your can on top, the bottom side down, and I'm going to eyeball that in the middle. You probably want to measure or something, but I'm just going to eyeball that out and trace around. Okay, I'm going to cut that out. Again, there's other tools that you can use this with, but I find the Dremel uh, to be the handiest in this situation. I'm going to draw, or not draw, but I'm going to cut an inner circle right about there, not even a quarter of an inch, all the way around the outer circle with the Dremel. My little girl just came outside with some uh, chocolate chip raspberry homemade pancakes. Mmm, break time. Okay, that's done. Now I'm going to use this uh, Dremel grinder piece just to kind of smooth this out and uh, around the bottom intake holes as well. Just kind of clean it up a little bit. Uh-oh. Brooklyn's calling. Hello, Brooklyn. Hey, hey, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you something. You, you gotta quit calling me. My wife is getting suspicious. Okay, I'm done with the uh, grinding bit. I just kind of uh, cleaned everything up a little bit and then took the jagged edge off that as well. Now I'm gonna take the cutting tool on the Dremel and I'm gonna cut small slits going inward towards the, uh, the uh, outer ring, just to the outer ring. I'll show you. Now that's finished. I cut uh, all the way around just to the outer circle, making flanges. And that piece is finished. Now I'm going to grab our Progresso soup can, open this up, throw that away, 
Save that soup. Whoops. We're going to cook that up on the stove after all this is done. I'll rinse that can out. Okay, on this can, we're basically going to do the same thing on this upper band near the opening. We're going to eyeball some holes. Place them symmetrically. And we're going to drill these out. These are not going to be three quarter inch though. They're going to be a little smaller. Three eighths of an inch all the way around. And I already cleaned those up. Okay, next thing, we're going to draw some slots from the bottom. Don't cut off the bottom. That's the biggest mistake that people make with these stoves that I've seen on, on YouTube. From the first band up, this first slot, I'm going to draw some slots. Some jets. Eyeballing about the same size if you can. Some of you obviously, you know, will want to measure all this correctly. You know, just put your flip flops on and get your measuring instrument out using your angle grinder with a grinding blade on there. I'm going to uh, cut these slots out. I've got these slots in and I clean those up as well. So we got the slots in at the bottom, about an inch on that band. Now we're going to build a grill, a replaceable grill that goes in there. So that way all the uh, years of use that you're going to get out of this stove, uh, the grill will eventually corrode or uh, get to the point where you have to replace it. And I, and I make this so you can just take the grill in and out to replace it as needed. This stuff, it's kind of a uh, gutter grill. Uh, it's the best stuff that I have found for making the inside of these, uh, these stoves. Uh, but it is galvanized, so you want to give it a good burn and burn off all that galvanization before uh, you cook with it. Okay, take your scrap piece, take your stove, inside stove, and just draw a circle. Leaving about an inch around the sides, you'll need that to make the uh, grill stand. Okay, got my circle. Now I'm going to cut this out. And these are gonna these little tabs here. This is gonna be my stand for the stove. There you go now you can see what I mean a little better. That's the shape we're looking for. It looks like a little weed whacker blade. I'm gonna bend these down and kind of manipulate this so it goes in here, and you want it to stand up in there. And that's what we're looking for. You want those slots to be below the level of the grate. You want the air to be able to come in freely below the grate where your wood's going to be. That's the key. And by using a tool, even your, your uh, tin snips, you can press this down to level it off to where you need it to get it to stick in there. All right, we're almost done here. Are you still following me? Okay, here's the moment of truth. This does take a little manipulation. You don't want to break it here. If there's too much pressure, you'll actually crush, you know, you'll crush these little end pieces holding the bottom and close off those uh, slots. So you just kind of want to work this in, and don't be afraid. It, it, it's going to uh, bend inward, and that's okay. You want these flaps to bend inward. I don't believe I'm going to be able to do this with one hand. I'm just trying to show you how I get it started. I just kind of go around like this, bending it gently inward. You don't need a lot of pressure here. Moving it around. Oh, see, I just bent it a little bit. So I'm going to bend that back up. That's what we want to avoid. If it's if it's not enough, you can always go back and cut more grates into it. You know, cut deeper. But I believe I'm pretty close here. So I'm going to go for it. Because you want a tight fit. Just keep working it. There we go. Yeah, baby. There you go. Now, if you really... Or a nitpicker about it, you could take some JB Weld and put that around there. But uh, believe me, that's not going anywhere. That's it. I did it! I did it! <laughs> now, 
Now what I do to really seat it in there is I take that uh, tuna can, the bottom of it, and I put it in there because it fits perfect on top of that progresso, progresso can, and I just kind of turn it like that, and that will really seat it nice and tight. <laughs> nice. All right, we're done with the main body. Isn't that nice? Nice finished look. Made by a professional stove maker. I got it all packed up. I'm going to give it a test burn. And while it's burning off, I'm going to make the pot stand. Because right now, all we really have here is a heater. This couldn't be used to cook anything. If you put a pot over it, it'd, uh, it'd uh, stuff it out. So I'm going to give it a quick burn, get it lit. Come on over with me. All right, I'm big on safety. When I'm in the woods, I want to contain my fire to a minimum. So. Out of my bug out bag, I take my 231 ball powder, which I always carry around with me. Just use a pinch of that, okay? Just that much, no more. Put that in there, and then I use a three quarter cup of gas. Old gas works the best. Just pour that in there. Okay, take your wooden matches, strike, and then run like hell. Strike one, strike one. Run, run like hell, get ready. What? That's it? I prefer a larger explosion, but this will suffice. Okay, can't even have fun with fire anymore. All right, this is, uh, last but not least, the tuna can. Now, this is going to be the bottom. This side is the bottom of the pot stand. This is the top. So we're going to cut this out, and we're going to cut this out. And then we're going to cut some holes along the side, and we're going to cut a, uh, a feed slot so you can put wood in while you're cooking. That's what we're going to use this for. Okay, I took the top off, took the tune out, and saved that, of course. And then before removing the bottom, I drilled these holes using my uncanny eyeballing ability first, before taking the bottom off. The reason why is because I want to have some rigidness before I start drilling holes in the side here, otherwise it gets kind of messy. Now I'll take the uh, top off, or the bottom off, I'm sorry. This side, not this side, this side. Okay. Now I'm going to take this. Is there any intelligent life farms on YouTube? No. I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut out the first ring. See that right there? That's the first ring. I'm going to cut that out. Okay, and there we go. I clean this up a little bit and we're also going to pinch that lip down. But first, we're going to make a feed hole. So what I usually do is I look around for the ugliest hole that I eyeballed. Everybody's got an ugly hole. That's the one we're going to get rid of. And I would say this one I eyeballed a little low. So I'm going to cut this section out because that's going to be our feed hole. See, everybody's got an ugly hole. Everybody's got a feed hole. You have to decide which one you're going to place your brain next to. And right there, we're going to cut that out right now. All right, when you're done, your stove stand should look like this. Top cut out, you got a little slot here so you can feed it while you're cooking. And what's cool about that is that it'll sit right up there and that will hold your pot. And when it's not in use, fits down your stove for easy packing. How nice. Believe it or not, there's another freaking way to do this. Give you this option too. You can take some of that mesh crap and just cut out. Just cut out a little ring. See? Like a C. C stand for cookie. Nom, nom, nom. Put that on there like that, and then you can simply bend it back. Stick it in there. But I think this is cooler, because that's how Bush Buddy does it. Depending upon uh, the trip, of course, I will take multiple ways to cook. I will often bring a wood-burning stove and an alcohol stove along for short trips. Um, this is a white box stove, and that fits perfect down in there so you can use your wood stove as a windbreak as well. Now usually when I'm in the field I'll take some tinder or some sap and I'll uh, even a uh, cotton ball soaked with Vaseline. Today since I got my uh, alcohol stove out, oop, just to make things easier, I'll just give that a squirt. Start that up. I'm going to cook that soup. And this is just, I mean, this is like 30 or 40 seconds. You can already see it, the gasification process starting. That's a good stove, man. Well built, if I don't say so myself. Look at the jets pouring out of the side there.
Once the smoke goes away, I'll put the soup on. Got my Primus titanium cook pot. Put my soup in there. There we go. And we're gonna put that on. Look at that, man! Flames. Where's my, where's my lid? There's my lid. All right. Start the timer. What do we got here? See how long okay, it about five minutes. I've got a boil. I believe my soup is ready for consumption. Put that in my cozy. Tell you what, just makes you want to go camping. Mm. Ouch. So that's it. I really got nothing else to show you. That's how the Yankee Prepper makes a hundred and twenty dollar wood stove for probably less than five bucks, and it works real good. I'm eventually going to uh, continue this series now that I've uh, shown the Swiss Volcano volcano stove and now that I've shown these I'm going to do a uh, breakdown on the wood stoves, the alcohol stoves, and my MSR stoves. So uh, I'll see you in a future vid. Really? You're sitting in my chair now. First the couch. Now you're in my chair. This is becoming a problem. We're having some issues here. We're not communicating.